everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. So, the video today is on the Spejo 3008 2010 with the 1.6 turbo petrol engine. I believe it's the EP, EP6 or something like that. Uh, same engine used on Minis uh, N, N16, I think it is, on the, on the BMWs, on the Minis. Uh, anyway, it's the 1.6 turbo petrol. And uh, this car came to me, um, actually just before, because you might gonna see that, uh, the car developed uh, parking brake fault, battery on, you can't really see, but I had to put the battery on charge because the first time I came to the car to do what I'm going to show you in a second, I tried to unlock the car and the car wouldn't unlock. So I had to unlock it with a key and the battery was dead. Uh, or very, 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 very low. So I just put the battery on charge this morning. Well, just before I started this video. So there is battery now, but there is a few couple faults for handbrake. I don't know. I'll have to check that later. Uh, but the main reason why the car came to me was because... And this is the complaint. Uh, the car drives fine, uh, but when you get into the like motorway speeds, the car drives okay for a little bit and then goes into limp mode. Engine light comes on. Uh, if you, and then it stays in limp mode, obviously. If you turn the engine off, leave it off, turn it back on, it goes again until you get to that sort of driving conditions. I was only told only happens when you get to like sort of highway, uh, motorway speeds, that's when it happens. Strayway, at the same time, uh, the owner of this car uh, spotted a problem and he showed me what it was. And he asked me, look, will this be the cause of it? And uh, and obviously my reply was, might not be, but surely is not helping. It might be that it is, it might be that it's not. Uh, so... He I like that fault to me, uh, and um, and what I've done is I have already repaired that part, um, which um, yes, theoretically you'd buy a new one, etc., etc. But guys, you know me better. If I can fix it, I will fix it. I will not buy a new. So uh, I'm gonna leave two clips. I'm gonna leave the repair of that part uh, now next. Uh, that was done two days ago. Um, I wanted to do it before I start the video. Well, I had to do it before I started the video um, because obviously I knew that fault was there, so I decided to repair that. So hopefully we'll get quite straightforward today. If that was the fault, the car will be fixed. But uh, I'll leave you now with the repair of that part, and um, and yeah, I'll see you very very shortly. So the problem that was highlighted to me when the car was dropped uh, was this. So this is, I removed this hose today only, and for you guys that are going to notice that this, well, I don't know how I'm going to make the video, I don't know if I'm going to tell you before, but yes, I'm doing this even before I turn on the ignition, okay? So the car was dropped here uh, four days ago, or five days ago, um, and I have not even worked on the car, the weather has not been helping. I've been doing other stuff for you that follow my videos. Uh, I've been organizing the shed, etc. Sorry, the workshop. And I've been quite busy. So, But this was dropped. So uh, I'm doing this even before. I have not even turned the ignition on on the car. I've not scanned the car. which just highlighted to me this problem. And uh, the, guy, the guy said, will this be the cause of the issue? And I thought, well, possibly, but we're going to have to obviously fix this and then go from there. Removing this pipe today, looks like this engine does not have a airflow meter. So, I don't know, this is just the section side before the turbo. So, that's this is, goes on the turbo, this runs over the engine like this, and it goes at the back of the engine on the air filter. It looks like there is no airflow meter, but I haven't digged too much into there, so it might be that there is. Uh, but still, we need to fix this problem first, uh, just in case if he's getting, uh, if he's making any influence on the actually uh, drivability of the car. So we're going to do that because I haven't scanned the car yet or anything like that. I don't know exactly 
if this would make any sense or no. I don't know why the codes are on the car. But still, we're going to fix this first and then we'll move from there. The plan to, to fix this is, well, I will show you. So this belongs here at this angle because it sits really well. So what we're going to do is the following. I will, I will actually, I will do the following. I will fix this first and then I will show you the end result. There we go. All done. So what I've done is I've glued this using, well, using this black sealant that I used to actually glue ECUs. Uh, to seal issues uh, and then as you can see right there I've done four little holes so I've done a two millimeter hole uh, on the actually elbow and then on the plastic pipe I did a one millimeter I think uh, and I just got these four screws here as you can see it's really looking good so because it's the section side, if it was the, 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 the exhaust side of the turbo, the pressure side, probably I wouldn't risk it. But being the, this side, uh, I think it's okay. Um, so it's, I'm really happy with the result. It's really proper sealed, as you can see. It's really good. So, yeah. So now we're going to put it back on the car and test it. But as I explained already... I haven't even scanned the car. Tomorrow I'm working again, so uh, on my next day off I will put this back on. And then, yes, I will start the video, scan the car, etc, etc, and we'll go from there. Uh, this being the problem, well, if this was the problem, the problem is already fixed. I don't know yet, but we'll have to see. The only reason why I've done it is obviously because I was planning to do something like this, and now we need to let it dry. So when I'm working on the car on my next day off, this is already done. Uh, which would be really good. It's going to dry for 48 hours, pretty much. So it should be... But it's, it's okay. It's not going to move from here. I'm sure it won't, it won't move from here. Look. Once it's dried, it's, it's really good. Yeah. It's really good. It's really secure. Okay. So, yeah. See you now in a couple days' time. Okay. So, as you have seen, here it is. Um, dried, obviously. Uh, let me put it here so completely dried out a really snug and proper fix i'm really happy with this it's really looking it's looking really nice actually <laughs> right so what we're going to do now is before i fit this uh, i'm going to scan the car uh, because i want to understand what was the fault the car was uh, obviously triggering if uh, if any faults would actually um point us to something like that or if uh, there's some other faults and maybe that has nothing to do with it. Uh, even because when I looked at the car, when I removed that part, I can't see an airflow meter on this car. So, but that pipe that connects to that elbow in there, I don't know where it goes uh, yet. But there's no airflow meter. So without the airflow meter, I'm not 100% sure if a vacuum leak before the turbo, if that would actually influence too much. Uh, probably would, don't take me wrong, most likely you will, but um, but yeah, let's kind of scan the car and see what we have in there. Okay, and this is really interesting because... I have no communications with the engine CCU. ABS was reporting a fault with no communications with that. Let me see if the BSI tells me the same. No communications with the engine ECU. How the heck is the engine ECU working then? Hmm. Ah, I've cancelled it. Damn it. Uh, let me go there again, see if it comes up with the same fault. Hmm, no fault code detected.
so this is the electric parking brake so the, then the voltage I knew that okay let's clear that see the airbags No fault codes. Why I can't communicate with the engine? Engine relay. Let me see the fuse box under the engine hood. This is really strange. Is this a Maxi Cs issue? Is the Maxi Cs not able to communicate with the engine issue? here? Ah, now he gives me something. Okay, which is who we have on this? Let me have a look. Okay, you can see straight through the bracket. Uh, the ECU is a 17.4. Is a MEV? Oh, damn it. Is MEV or MED? No, it's MEV. It's MEV 17.4. Is this um, Euro 4 being 2010? Maybe a Euro 5, but I believe they're going to be, to communicate this, no, oh, come on. The glare is terrible today, which is good because it's sunny, but there we go. No communications. Let me try. Seventeen point. no, it's not the 17.42, was nothing there. Uh, I hate this. Be... Now, definitely I have no communications with the engine issue for some odd reason. There we go. Right, what the heck's going on? Okay, so I think I'm gonna get uh, the Ag box. Uh, I can't really understand what's going on. Just to make sure uh, there is actually a problem with the communications. The car starts fine. I'm gonna turn it off and turn it back on. But it starts fine. There we go. So it must be some sort of communications because otherwise the car wouldn't start because of the immobilizer, I guess. Uh, that said, the parking brake faults are gone now. I think a few cycle of the ignitions and the fault was gone. Um, as, as we have seen, it was just for the voltage. So I think a few cycles uh, with no faults and, and, and the faults were gone for the parking brake. Um, now, I need to connect with the engine because I need to know what's going on in there. Now, uh, rectification, in case if someone's going to pick it up. Uh, this is actually a med. 17 MED not MEV that was my bad but I already tried so mission on go already tried the med 17.4 med 17.4 euro 4 we actually changed the systems so the part number of this is now recognized it's not the 5FX anyway, it's the 5FV anyway. So this will be wrong anyway. Look, but it comes in now. Ah, oh, It had to be when I, when I was recording, wasn't it? But this is going to be the wrong ECU anyway. Or at least the wrong engine. Oh my god, too many, too many stuff. But there's some. Okay, I'm not gonna clear any faults. Let me see if I can get the Euro 5 now. Come on, communicate. What the heck's going on with this car? It's a little bit weird. Let me see if he shows me 5 FS. So it's not the 17.4. It's gonna be that one in there, 4.2. Because the 4.2 actually has my correct engine, 5 FV, as you can see from the VIN number. 
5FV. See if I can get on this one now. Guys, I was not able to communicate as you have seen, you see. Bang on now. Let's see if we have exactly the same faults. You see, different faults now. Can you see these now? So this is why it's important that uh, you log in in the right ECU. You see the faults are different. Oh, come on. Then the ones on the other module. So can network, uh, turbocharging circuit. I have a few things in there unplugged. Obviously the hose is still on there on the floor. Uh, can network and define, forget about the undefined codes. External head temperature, so yeah, that's this connected battery signal. So yes, now that I have a picture of what's going on, it's gonna clear these codes. Actually guys, before I, can, before I do this, there's one thing I wanna do. I should have done it before. It's gonna plug that back in. Because I don't have any other faults other than this. So for the turbocharging circuit, turbocharging circuit. So it could be that that air leak, uh, that intake leak, was actually the cause of my issue. Uh, so let's go to put that pipe back on. When I put the pipe back on, uh, that hose, uh, we're going to inspect around, make sure everything is good. And we'll go from there. But these no communications for so long and then all of a sudden it starts to communicate. It's really intriguing me. It's really intriguing me. Okay, and look around this engine. It's actually a very clean engine uh, for a 10-year-old car nearly. Um, it's really clean, as you can see. Look, it's, it looks brand new. Um, the car is um, 80, 88,000 miles, I think it is. So, as you can see, so I've seen the through there. You can actually see right at the bottom. You can see the label, but it only says uh, Med 17.4. It doesn't say it's 0.2, but Obviously is a point two. So the pipe the hose goes underneath here Connects right here in the back. Sorry about the glare connects right here comes all the way turns around into the turbo intake and This is the beta connects underneath where that was broken and This one connects at the top. So let's kind of plug all these back in uh, But before that I'm just going to do a very good inspection around here make sure everything is good etc etc Oh, the hose is not in place yet. Found a couple of things. Uh, there's a bolt missing right here at the back. We're going to replace that. This plug for the coolant level is off and it looks like it's off for some time. So I'm not sure why is disconnected. Uh, not really sure. And guys, I mean front of the uh, engine that belongs to the royalty. Look at that. We are in front of a Prince engine. So I put another bolt. It's not a new shiny one, but it will do the job better than leave this rattling around. Pipe is now in place. Okay. All connected, all plugged in, all the hoses, as you can see. All done. Now let's kind of clear the code, start the engine, and see what we get from there. Okay, just uh, deleted, scan the car again, no fault codes detected. It's going to start this engine, even because uh, the engine just, uh, the car just went into economy mode. So, it's going to start the car. Okay. Let's let it idling for a little bit to warm up the engine a little bit because I haven't start I only start the engine a couple times for a couple minutes this morning. Uh, let's gonna let the engine get to uh, working temperature. Then I guess we might have to go for a test drive really um, unless some codes comes back and we need to deal with them. But for now looks good for now. Okay, and the car is now here running for about, if you check the last clip, for about half an hour. Uh, it's now up to temperature. Uh, during this time, I restarted the car twice. Uh, turn it off, then turn it back on. Uh, everything looks okay. So the car is revving fine. Uh, no engine lights, no nothing. Uh, I could scan the car again, but I think the best thing to do now is probably go for a test drive. Now, the test drive is, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Um, 
right now i don't know when this video is gonna go up but right now guys is the 2nd of april and the uh, uk is under lockdown because of this virus um any other day i would drive the car end of the road come back no problem but i think i'm not gonna do it uh, plus i've just checked and this car has no road tax so uh, i'm gonna have to ask the owner to come pick it up go for a drive and let me know uh, so i think the, the next clip is gonna be just me feedback you whatever the owner tells me if it's fixed or not uh, unfortunately like i said i'm not gonna risk it to go for a test drive with this uh, for obvious reasons um but yeah but so far it's looking good guys anyway so so far it's looking good and it's no longer looking good so the guy came here took the car went for a drive came back 20 minutes later saying that the car is now not losing power so it's not going into limp mode anymore uh, power is good but the engine light came on so we're gonna do a quick scan and see exactly what we have and I have a feeling that this is why it's causing my problem is a hit and miss communicating with this ECU um, just same thing as before you see I just I don't know if it's the scanner or if it's the car it's just weird because the car starts fine every single time if it was a, a can communication issue unless the immobilizer line is separate on this I haven't checked diagrams just gonna keep trying until I see if I can communicate with it right here. okay and after a little bit of insistence uh, I managed to actually log in right at the top u1218 can network fault I don't know I it's, it's a little bit of a weird one I'm not sure what is causing this fault uh, as I said car starts fine every single time so I don't know if that's actually causing any issues um, I know this battery is no good because I had to jump the battery the other day so when I was to work on the car so that's not a very good start in there but uh, we do have these two faults uh, so that's for it they both say the same but the 0299 I believe is a hander boost and that I believe is something to do with the, the diverter valve I'm not 100% sure yet but we're gonna dig into this See if we can find out anything wrong with these two. And, um, and we'll go from there. For now, I'm not going to worry too much with the CAN network, even though I struggle to scan the car. As you can see, I have the key on for about two minutes, three minutes. Look at my battery voltage already. You see? My battery is, is, dem is doomed. This battery is, is gone. It needs a new battery, definitely. Um, and then I need to sort these out. Okay, and been here now for a long time. The glare is just killing it. Uh, I'm right now scanning the can lines. Uh, ECU is disconnected, uh, but that doesn't really make a difference. That doesn't really matter. Let me see if I can get this with a little bit less. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, maybe like that. Okay, there we go. Seriously? And you're gonna hold yourself in there, right? So, as you can see, my can lines are there. I've been here turning ignition on and off for about 10 minutes. There's always this way, there's no drops. This is, is always good if I go like that, as you can see, it's really no drops. You can see it's a constant line. Let me go there and put a little bit of uh, that. You can see a little bit better. I'll bring this one like this. So we can see they match both perfectly. There's no drops. Nothing. Absolutely perfect. If I zoom in a little bit more, look at that. Nothing, all the same, there's no drops, no that thing. So I don't understand why it doesn't communicate every now and then. But I start to kind of figure out why. Just hold a second, I'll show you. 
Okay, it's not really showing you right now inside, but uh, basically the reason why I was uh, saying that maybe the communication is due to... Uh, what, what I was thinking is that uh, this failure to communicate every now and then is due to the BSI. Um, there is a, a code coming up for the BSI pretty much every single time I log in. This time it is not really um, showing, uh, but it was for um, unexpected uh, BSI reinitialization. So I don't know if the, GS, the BSI works as a gateway. I would have to check diagrams, but uh, I just thought that might could cause some uh, communication disruptions. Anyway, let's kind of move on because I don't really think that is the code that is showing the light, uh, making the light come up. Anyway, is the turbo stuff. And I'm not going to focus right now on the ender boost on the first code because I think that code is actually caused by the code below, which is the P2261. And that code, um, I, I did a little bit of research, and that code is for this valve, which is a bypass valve for the turbo. So this is what we're going to check. I'm going to pull it out, um, see if it's working, try to activate the valve maybe first, and uh, see what we have. Okay, and the valve seems to be working just fine. As you can see, I have already checked this yellow rubber seal at the back. It doesn't seem to be uh, broken or ripped. This seal here right at the front looks good to me, which obviously seals inside there, right at the back. The seals right there. Everything looks good. So let's kind of look at the actually turbo um, actuator valve, uh, the solenoid. For the vacuum now next okay checked the actually turbo actuator uh, it seems to be actuating fine is the rod is moving uh, fine so I can't really see nothing wrong with that at first glance uh, but in the meantime I actually went for a drive so I went for a drive And this is, oh, crap. Uh, in the meantime, I managed to get the codes to come back. All I need to do, all I had to do was uh, rev the car like 5,000 RPMs or so. I uh, revs and keep in there for four or five seconds and the light comes on. But this is under normal driving. That was way before. So basically, what the car does is, is the guy said to me, power is okay. The car has no power at all. That, that's why oh you can't trust people is it, 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 it is like a normal 1.6 with no turbo that's why it feels like and you can actually see in there so the 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 green line the higher line is the line is the the the, the pressure the the i oh, is the pressure the ecu is requesting and the blue line is the pressure being read look at that can you feel that? Is look at that for example. I I put I put my foot down. The ECU requested that. Then it start. Look at that. It just goes go. And if you drive for long distance, um, I, I should have done a record uh, rather than take a picture. It just goes like slowly, slowly. It never really met the requested pressure. So. So, do we have a turbo issue? or what do we have here uh the codes that came back i will show you here turn the ignition on uh these two codes oh he actually came with another one now <laughs> uh this one was not here before it was only these two first and then it comes with the 0299 uh, but is these two codes here? That's the first ones that comes up. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we have. So these three codes. And right now, I'm not really sure what the problem is. Okay, guys, and I think I've started to get somewhere. So after a little bit of digging, I want to put the camera through here just to check the turbine. Sorry, the impeller side. See how it is. But as I start to look around, I've seen 
I've touched this and I didn't like this and uh, this cover literally it just kind of welded it's plastic welded in there just came off literally like this as actually as you can see it looks like someone has tried to glue it in the past but obviously this pipe here which comes from underneath the manifold comes through here then there's there is a valve in there that's supposed to close under pressure that valve so when it goes down closes under pressure and then releases to allow the engine to breathe back into the intake but obviously if this is not completely sealed all the pressure from the turbo is going to leak up here um, so it's, it's really bad i think it needs a new cover there's no other way really Okay, back to the Peugeot while I wait for parts for this Vauxhall. Uh, we now got a brand new genuine engine cover um, or rocket case cover. Uh, genuine. It was a little bit tricky to convince the owner to get a genuine stuff, but he ended up by actually go genuine, which was good. I didn't want to spend all this time changing the, the thingy and then put a third party or a used as he was trying to do at the beginning uh, to find out it was also bad. Um, even third party brand new if you watch my channel you have seen I had a very interesting experience on a Vauxhall with a brand new third party cover so I didn't want to go through that route again so what, what we're going to do now is replace this I don't think I'll take it through this unless no I don't think I'll take it through this guys uh, it's literally remove the bolts clean Put this one back in. I might show you halfway through, but it's no rocket science. There's not a lot to remove on this engine to get to it, other than this little cover. Uh, pull this loom back, take this pipe, uh, and connect a few couple of things that I did already anyway. That, um, that's it, really. It's no piece of cake, really. Okay, all the bolts removed. Let's kind of pull this out. and it's not looking too bad so obviously we're going to clean all this all the where the seals goes um, sharp corners that and that we're going to use a little bit of uh, sealant I already removed the older one uh, other than that looks okay the cover itself only thing I've noticed is this breather here is completely blocked either blowing or pulling is completely blocked this one that's gonna have to be removed once installed but this one if you pull here it allows after a little bit of pressure it allows hair to come out so it allows all the system to breathe this one it doesn't it's completely clogged up or blocked whatever absolutely blocked uh, other than that it looked okay it looked like these seals here were leaking this one on the spark plugs it looks like they were gone so but yeah that's going to install the new one which is just the reverse and Give it a go, see what happens. Okay, all back in place. Um, at least uh, enough to go for a test drive if I have to. I don't need the filter box, the air filter box, etc. So all then up to here. Um, it's not like it's gonna suck anything into there. So it's good enough for me to, to start the car and try. I put the, the camera through here. Everything looked okay. The Westgate looks okay to me. The uh, impeller looks okay to me, so everything looks okay. Um, everything is in place, kind of. So we're gonna start the engine, see if we see any difference. Okay, let's start the engine. Started fine. Feel too low. Obviously the faults from when we left last time. Engine is running smooth, no problems at all. Looks fine. Let me just uh, rev it just a little bit. The engine's still cold, so I don't want to rev it too much. Oh, what was that? Oh, I'm gonna have to rev it, mate. Hold on, hold on. Oh, guys, oh, yes. Right, I can hear the turbo spooling, which I couldn't hear before. Um, definitely, I can hear the whistling from the turbo. That was not there before. A thousand percent was not there before. 
Oh, definitely. Definitely I can hear the turbo. So let's kind of scan the car, clear these faults. Look a little bit of the live data. Stationary here is, is a little bit difficult, but still I want to see how quick the turbo actually catch up with the, the uh, pressure requested because even before stationary uh, it was very difficult to get to that pressure I think it was going up to uh, 1500 millibars I think was uh, it was and it wouldn't get there at all it was about a thousand to uh, 1200 around there uh, around that mark but we're going to look at the live data and we'll go from there okay and unfortunately I could not celebrate for too long because after I went for a test drive Right, now trust me on this, it was slightly better, very slightly better, but it was still the same issue. Now, um, the car would, out, right, it was very slightly better, I had to put it across, the car would pull a little bit better, but it, the power was not there, the, 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 the car, it was, was like something was dragging the car, something was dragging the car back, like, he wouldn't, I, I don't know, it was really weird. But, was one last thing for me to do, which I actually did. I've split, I've took these out, and, uh, and I've split these here, start the car, and obviously I didn't went for a drive, but stationary, I can definitely hear the, 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 the turbo spooling, etc, etc. Uh, on live data, still the pressure doesn't reach what's supposed to reach, uh, but I believe the car being stationary, the, the ECU will not allow the turbo to spool anyway because it's not, uh, it's not under load, etc. So it's kind of normal. But uh, because I've checked everything, I didn't want to blame the turbo because I'm, I, the turbo doesn't look like he, he has nothing wrong to be, to, for me to blame it. Um, I got the camera through here to check the west gate. The west gate seems to be okay, seems to be sealing, etc, etc. Everything else is checked up. The, the valve for the, for the vacuum, everything seems to be okay. So it was one last thing for me to check. Interestingly enough, I have a friend of mine that was dealing with the exact same issue on a RZ, I think it was. And um, I've suggested him to actually check the cat. And guess what? He was the cut on his case and in my case guess what he's gonna be the cut so unfortunately I've suggested for him to do it but I didn't have the time to do it this is like a week two weeks later I had other cars to do uh, I have another one here now uh, but yeah so I've suggested him and he did it and he was the cut indeed uh, but as I said I didn't have the time to, to check my one until now I didn't need I don't need to go for a drive all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera in there and I'm going to show you how the cart oh it didn't turn off uh, oh no it's there hold on now am I gonna actually copy because this is bad like this absolutely terrible let me put it somewhere where there's not come on I want to put the maxis in a way that I can show you without much glare. Oh, that's actually not too bad like that. So, can you? You're gonna focus. Look at my cat. Look, it's it's all blocked up. So as I move the camera, look at that. Look at the cat. Look, there's a few openings and then everything else is covered in crap. Can you see that? Look at that. Look at my cat. Look. The cat is absolutely clogged. Look at that. Can you see that in there? Completely clogged up. So the only thing I can think of is that because the, the car was running lean most likely because of the cover being broken or because there's too much air, whatever. Something was uh, making the car to deposit all that stuff on top of the on top of the cut and 
you have what, what, what you can see in there. So it's gonna need a new cat. I'm not gonna take you through the, the, the stuff, through the, the process of changing this cat. I'm just gonna get one, get replaced, and hopefully that will fix my problem. So that's where we are at the moment. Okay, old cat is out. Uh, this is like two weeks later, maybe a little bit over actually. Um, the owner actually bought the cat himself. Um, I, I ended up by not purchasing the, the cat. So he bought the cat, he only brought me the cat two days ago, but I, I've been doing night shifts, just left this morning. So old cat, new cat, that's gonna fit it and hopefully this will fix my problem. Okay, so the new cat is now in place. Just uh, warming up the engine to go for a test drive. Uh, I'm not gonna put anything else back on. I'm just gonna go like that. The reservoir is securing here, it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, just warm me up, gonna move my cars and go for a test drive. Okay, and just came for a test drive and what a different car. Oh absolutely beautiful now power is here now not like the owner was saying the car had power the car was really sluggish the car is driving beautifully now uh, just let me get onto those back roads and i can show you live data uh, turbo pressures etc so we can have a better look okay so the first thing i want to show you is that the car used to turn the light on uh, if revved above i would say three and a half four thousand rpms and was kept there um, for like more than two or three seconds so I'm gonna pull it it's pulling really good Oy. yeah it's pulling really 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 good guys uh, absolutely brilliant uh, no lag no nothing car is driving beautiful absolutely beautiful so we I'm gonna have to record these guys hold on a second let me record a little bit of live data I was just looking at the live data to pause it but I don't even know where to pause that okay just hold a second guys okay just got back home no light, car is driving absolutely perfect. Uh, I paused this on one of the intersections uh, when I took off. So as you can see, the green line is the pressure measured. The blue line is the pressure requested by the ECU. And as you can see, so that was second gear there. So as you can see, there is a slightly lag in there. But tell you what, you barely, you don't really notice this when you're driving. Um, uh, so yeah, so there's a little bit in there. Uh, then obviously, uh, this is second gear. Then third gear, the turbo pulls straight away. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. And then sixth gear there where it drops. And then I just cruised again. But, uh, but as you can see, it's absolutely perfect. So, conclusion, a blocked uh, catalytic converter. Um, I would love to open the old one that's just there on top of that uh, bench in there, sort of. Um, but the guy wants the cat, the old cat back. So, otherwise I would cut the top off just to show you. Um, after showed you what I've showed you on the camera, I actually spent a little bit more of camera looking and the, that cat is completely clogged. There is only a few uh, holes on the ceramic uh, that you can actually see open. Uh, it's, it's completely gone. Uh, yes, could probably be cleaned. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but I think this was uh, the, the quickest solution, I guess. And to make sure you have the car driving okay. Even because, I don't know for how long that cat has been like that. I don't know if the fact that the cat has been blocked uh, is probably an overheating at the top. Uh, it might have caused some other damage on the cat. Uh, this cat that I fitted, uh, all the parts for this car were supplied by the owner. This cat is a third part. Uh, it's not genuine. Um, it's slightly smaller. 
so the amount of ceramic inside is a little bit less than the original it's not triggering any faults or anything like that uh, I drove the car I can't remember now but I drove the car for a good 20 minutes to half an hour I guess uh, rev it uh, stopped once on the way back started again fine I'm happy with the result and I'm happy as well guys is that I haven't replaced anything on this car that I shouldn't I should have not done so it was not like if I just throw parts at it yes if I would have replaced the cat first possibly I would have never find the problem with the cover but the problem is that cover most likely was the cause for the cat to fail because it was allowing air to getting to getting into the into the car uh, into the engine without being measured so glad I start that way to be honest through the intake to the exhaust because at least we found all the issues everything that was wrong with this car uh, we found it and we rectify it and now I'm gonna finish to assemble the car all the plastics etc etc and deliver the car and I think that's it for this video really so with no further ado guys hope there's some information on this video that you can find useful um, just one quick thing yes a pressure gauge on the O2 sensor at the top it would tell you a lot I don't have one of those so I spend a little bit more time uh, uh, chasing this issue um, it's one of those things guys I, I do more electrics than this stuff so but I might need to get some pressure sensors pressure gauge not just for this but for fuel lines uh, etc because I don't have nothing nothing like that so but yeah that that would have probably uh, saved you a little bit of time um, but yeah as I was saying guys hope there's some information on this video you can find useful hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you do have any questions any comments please put them below and like always thanks for watching